It's true what they say, lettering is the bread and butter of embroidery. So to do the best embroidery, you need the best lettering. And that's why you've chosen Wolcom Embroidery Studio Digital Edition. So let's take a look at how we do lettering. Now let's start by creating a simple lettering object on screen. And to do that, it's pretty easy. From the left side, select the lettering icon, click on screen and type your text. Now on the left side object property window is where you can adjust your lettering settings. First of all, you can see the text that you've created. And if you wanna do two line text, you can simply adjust that to be on two lines and press update text and it will update for you on screen. And from this window, we can also make other choices such as our font. Now with Wulcom, we have hundreds of fonts built into the software, which are professionally digitized ESA or Wilcom fonts. And you can simply select the font on screen and it will change the font style for you to see. Now, as you're selecting different fonts, it remembers the last five fonts you selected in the section below. So if you wanna get back to one of those previous fonts, they're available for you to select with a single click. In addition to the hundreds of standard Wilcom fonts available in the Wilcom software, Wilcom Embroidery Studio also supports true type fonts. So if your customer has an exact true type font, you can install that on your Windows computer and you can select that font and Wilcom will automatically convert that to embroidery, saving you hours of manually digitizing that font. In this dialog box are also a lot of other options you can choose to customize your Wilcom lettering. First of all, there's your height. Now you can specify an exact height you want, such as eight millimeters, or at any point in time, you can use the reshape handles and simply drag your lettering on screen and the height will change automatically as you're dragging that around. The other choice you can make is your baseline. By default, a lettering comes in as a straight line, but from the drop-down list, you have a selection of different baselines to choose from, including arc clockwise, arc counterclockwise, there's a circle clockwise, which is a little bit like arc, but with a complete circle for you to modify and edit. And circle counterclockwise and any shape, which will let you basically set any predefined shape you want by placing nodes along the way. And as you reshape or resize those, your curve will change and so will your lettering baseline. Now let's restore that back to a straight line so we can continue this demonstration. Below that are also some additional settings that you can choose, including justification, left, right, center, or of course, full justification, and some spacing settings where you can adjust either the space between each letter, between each word, or between each line of your embroidery. And there are a couple of ways you can also adjust those settings. First of all, you can do it here in the dialog box. So at the moment it's set to 10% of the letter height, meaning the space between each letter is 10% of the overall height of the lettering. In this case, it's about uh, just under 10 mil. If I want more spacing, then I can maybe say, let's do it 30%. And the spacing between each letter will change. Of course, as the spacing changes, you do run in the risk of the software then performing a trim and a tie off, which will work perfectly fine on the machine, but could slow down your machine because it's trimming between each and every single letter. So let's bring that back to 10. And between the word at the moment, our spacing is 60% of the letter height. Well, I can make it be 100% and that spacing will be a little bit bigger as well. And if it was multi-lined lettering, which I can again edit up at top, then I can adjust the line spacing. At the moment, it's 50% or I can make it 100% or as low as 20% in this case. Now the other way you can adjust those settings is to do it on screen using the reshaping tools. Now with your lettering object selected, and I'll just zoom in a little bit more to make it easy to see, you can go over and select your reshape tool and a few different options become available. First of all, you can see that above each letter is a magenta diamond. And that is the select handle for each one of those lettering objects or letters as it would be. 
So if I want to change the spacing of just the L and the E, I can pick up the L and just drag it slightly and the spacing will be changed. I can drag my mouse over a group of those letters and again select all of them and move them all manually on screen. I can also pick up my baseline and adjust that and put it on any angle. Or of course, if it was a any shape, I could then add some additional nodes and change the shape of that baseline as well. So let's put some of these options we've learned into effect with an existing design where I want to add some new text beneath it. The first thing I want to do is open up my design. Then I want to add my new lettering. So again, I select the lettering tool and on screen, I will type Sydney, Australia, because I want to arc this text beneath my logo, matching the same shape as that existing logo. So if I zoom in a little bit more by pressing B on my keyboard and drawing a box, first thing I want to do is change the font. It's currently block two, which is okay, but I want a bit more of a uh, stylish look to this uh, logo to match the rest of the branding. So I'm going to choose this one here, Bodoni which is like a nice serif style font. Now I want to change the height. At the moment it is 10 millimeters, which is probably a little too big to, uh, based on the size of my logo above. So I want to bring that down to eight millimeters. And now I want to change from a free line baseline or a fixed line, which would be two of the straight ones to an arc counterclockwise. So it matches the curve of the circular logo above. And then I move it into position and get the right height, which is probably about here underneath the logo, almost about a centimeter gap from the logo to the lettering. But of course, as you can see, the lettering is not arced in a shape that matches this logo above. So again, with the lettering selected, I come over to my reshape tool and you'll notice that the baseline has now been exposed for that arc. And towards the center, you'll see this yellow icon here. With that selected, you can drag it up and down and it will change the baseline of your lettering. So then you can just eyeball it to make sure it curves and matches the same shape as your logo above, which I think is probably about there. And I let it go and it's now being resized. Now, if I look at my lettering, I can see there's probably a few kerning issues here. I'm not really happy with the space with the A and the L and around here and the commas a little bit too close. Now again, if I box in by pressing B and drawing a box around my objects and then select that lettering and go back to reshape. In addition to moving individual icons to adjust the lettering spacing, on the edge here, you'll see a small little triangle with a line next to it, which is your overall spacing of your lettering. When you drag that in and out, it will change the spacing overall across your entire lettering object. So that's the first thing you might want to do just to get a rough visual of what the size and the space would be for most of the letters. And then again, manually, you can move on screen and adjust some of the letters to reduce that space. And I'll grab that L, I and A. I'll bring that a little closer and maybe that A as well and maybe that L as well, actually. Okay. And then of course, I might want to adjust all of them. So I select all of those lettering objects because the S is a little higher than the A and I'll just drag it around and visually on screen, that looks to be roughly the same height and I'm pretty happy with that. Now to finish off that design, I will just adjust my auto start center. So it is finishing directly in the middle of the design. And now my design is ready for the machine. Now let's explore some of the sequencing options for your lettering. When you select a lettering object, and scroll down to the sequence option, there are some choices you can make about how the lettering will be sewn on your machine. By default, lettering is sewn from left to right, but you can adjust it to be from right to left or center out by half of each word, by half of each word or center out by letter at a time. And in addition to that, you can make a choice about how multiple lines are sewn from top to bottom from bottom to top, or like a snake method where it starts from the top, comes down and goes back in the other direction for the next line and continues to snake down in opposite directions for every line. Let's take a look at some of those in action. Let's start the stitch player tool. And if you watch on screen, we can see that the first object is sewing a standard left to right. 
Then the next one is right to left, then center out, center out by letter. Then multi-line with the standard top to bottom from left to left, and then bottom to top, and then top to bottom, but snaking each line at a time. Finally, we have lettering art. Lettering art are stylized envelopes that you can apply to your lettering objects. Select your lettering on screen, and from the Object Properties dialog box, scroll down to Lettering Art. Then select from any of the Lettering Art options available to choose from. When you apply a Lettering Art, you can use the Reshape tool and adjust the outline shape to get the envelope look and feel that you want. Thank you.